Hey everybody, I'm Kathy Hester from HealthySlowCooking.com and today I'm going to do an unboxing of the Nutter and we're going to go ahead and make a quick recipe in it. Just so you can kind of see, it's this white thing here. It's basically for a two-person household. So this is for you if you want to make fresh nut almond grain milk every day. So we'll talk about some of the different settings, how to use it and things like that as well. But just know if you want to make milk once a week, this one probably isn't for you. This is if you want to make fresh milk very often. And I like that idea, honestly. Okay, so let's unbox this. Okay, so you get a big thank you for your purchase. It's super awesome packaging, I have to say. It talks about this. You can scan so you can get a special gift. And it's got information here, how to get in touch with them. On the back, you're seeing kind of exactly how to use the Nutter. And it tells you some really important things. And you can go and watch their videos on YouTube. And there is a delay start. So this is something you want to keep off to the side. And then you have your cute things. So you get some stickers. There's a Nutter rainbow sticker. Plant-based milk is my love language. Made with Nutter. Drink more nut milk. And a puppy drinking milk. How can you not love these? Okay. And you get this cleaning brush, which is super nice. You get this magic cord, <laughs> as well as this booklet in here that I've taken out. And it has some recipes. And we'll look at some of those. This is the Nutter. It's larger than you expect it to be. But when you look at it here, it's about here. <laughs> that the rest of this is like the motor and stuff. So it is not as large a container as far as what you think you might be getting uh, or be able to make in it. We have a one tablespoon and a two tablespoon heavy measuring spoons. And then we have a strainer. One of the things that I like is that it does have a strainer. One of the things that I don't love as much is they kind of in the recipes are going, you don't really need to strain. And I think it's more of a personal preference. So I have a friend, she loves Okara, so she drinks up her Okara and I'm like, I want a smooth soy milk. So your mileage is gonna vary and we will be able to use this and we are going to use this. So if we look at <laughs> this, it says twist and pull open the cap. Use the provided scoops to place ingredients and you can look at the recipe book. Fill with water between minimum and maximum fill lines. Minimum makes about 8 ounces, max about 13 ounces. And then we want to put the, the stuff in and the lid on and then plug in the machine because if not, it's going to give us a lid error. And that's something to know because you, typically we plug things in and we're like, yeah, it's got an error. What's going on? That's what it is. So it talks about that and there's different settings and we're going to look at those too. There is room temperature, warm, hot, water boil, so you can use it just to boil water, keep warm and self-clean. And we'll look at all that. There is a delay start as well, so you could soak your nuts overnight and then have it start and have milk ready for when you wake up. So that's a really cool thing too. So if you look here, single serving, single serving. And so, there's apple spice latte, snickerdoodle, cashew milk latte. You, you'll notice a lot of Instagram friendly recipes. Ginger cinnamon almond milk, gingerbread latte, and those are all awesome. There are other recipes in here too, and they've got plain homemade nut milk, pumpkin spice cashew creamer, um, apple spice latte, cookies and cream, coconut matcha. So you can make a warm matcha in here while you're making the milk by adding the matcha powder. 
there's just a lot of nice things that you can do oat milk hot chocolate so you've got a lot of different recipes what we're going to do today is i'm going to make a candy bar creamer that in fact i'm going to turn into um, an ice cream pint okay so i've plugged the cord in to the outlet but i'm not going to plug it in here yet i want to put in my ingredients first so i'm going to put in two tablespoons of unsalted dry toasted delivered almonds because to me these toasted almonds just is really more of a candy bar flavor also without having any of the skins on this is going to just be a smoother milk anyhow i'm going to put some dates in here and i'm going to put about four dates in which seems excessive except that i'm making it into ice cream just want to make sure that you get the pits out Next, I'm going to go ahead and put in two tablespoons, actually three tablespoons of chocolate chips. I am using these endangered species oat milk dark chocolate chips and I really like them quite a lot. I'm going to put a little bit of vanilla extract in, probably about half a teaspoon. So I want to move this so I can see the max fill line. I've got about one and a half cups of water here, which I may need to use a little bit less. And I think we've got about one and a quarter cup in because I had so much other stuff in there. Okay, now that I've gotten the ingredients in, two tablespoons of toasted slivered almonds, three tablespoons of vegan chocolate chips, four dates. Um, which again could be excessively sweet for your creamer. You can totally just do it with chocolate chips. You could totally leave the chocolate chips out and just do it with um, dates. So what I want you to see is there's on and off right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and it's going to immediately give me this E2 error. Okay. The E2 error just means that there's no top on it, which there's not, okay? So if you just jump the gun, that's what's happening, okay? So you see here is unlock, here is lock. On the lid, you've got this little part. So we're gonna put it towards unlock. One thing that I have found is you expect it to be fixed about here, and sometimes you have to turn it a little bit further. And so if it turns a little bit further, don't worry about it. It's not that it's perfectly level here, it's that it fits, right? So if I take it off the E2, no more E2. So, and again, E2 is an important one to remember. The one thing to know is as I hit this, it's gonna go from one to another. If I leave it there, then it's going to go ahead and stay and start that cycle. So this is room temperature. This is warm. And so let's go ahead and, okay. And see when it's blinking like that, that's the one it's going to do. So I just have to go through until I get back to that one. We're going to do warm, though we could do room temperature. And what you're going to notice is that it's going to do some, it's going to wait, it's going to do some, it's going to wait, and we're going to talk a little bit about a few things. So why would you use what cycle? So boiling water, super self-explanatory. And I use this a lot when I may be trying to um, reconstitute soy curls, just to make hot water for tea, things like that. And you can kind of hear it heating up. So room temperature is if you would just, anything you would make normally in your Vitamix without heating it. So if you wanted to have raw almond milk, you would use room temperature. Because I have all those dates and I have those chocolate chips in there instead of cocoa, I want those to melt. That is one of the reasons why I'm using that setting. The other setting, which is called hot, that's for soybeans. So soybeans have to be cooked up to a certain temperature. And 
then it works fine. You don't have to soak your soybeans for this. I have done it both ways. I like to cook my soybeans a second time. And it's not, not loud. So this is blending everything in. So you can see it moves around a little bit, but it's holding steady. And it's gonna blend for a while, then not blend. Then blend for a while, then not blend. So that beeping tells us that it's ready. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that lid off and it is indeed gonna give me the E2 error. So if I want to, I could unplug it so I don't have to hear that. <laughs> Look at all that chocolatey goodness. And I can kind of come in here. It's, everything's pretty well blended up. All the chocolate is melted. That's kind of nice. I can go ahead and taste it right now, too. So let's take a quick... Oh, that's still good. To me, it tastes just like a candy bar. And you can use it just like this. So I am always scrape all, as much as I can off of this lid because I want it in my belly. So I'm just going to take a measuring cup, or it could be the cup I'm going to drink in if I wanted to. And we're going to take the Nutter Strainer. Let me show you the difference between it and a regular strainer. And I just want you to see them side by side. The holes are much smaller on a tea strainer. So you will get some things that are small to come through here. And why would that matter? If you're using a nut milk bag, it's gonna be strained to about this. And you just have to get used to what you <laughs> feel good about, really. And so let's pour some of this so you can kind of see. It's pretty nice, thick. See how it's going down? And it's straining. And at some point, you can either not strain it, which is fine, and it depends. So I just take my spatula and I move it, because usually it's just things get stuck in the holes. So again, if you can see it from this way. And then we'll look and see how much of, or if anything is at the bottom. I know with oats, there's always some. With almonds, and this one looks, you can sort of see in the bottom that there might be a few teeny, 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 tiny pieces. And honestly, I don't think this one needed straining, but that's one of the things, too, you can just kind of figure out. With the soy milk, I wanted to cook it a second time, and I didn't. So that's an experiment I'm going to do again, because that's my own personal taste. And one of the things I'm excited about is this is about what... Uh, a Ninja Creamy pint holds, so I can make some really neat mixtures this way and freeze them and then make them into ice cream too, without spending a lot of money on different creamers. See, there's not really much in there. There's a few little, little pieces, but not much at all. So see, there's not really, let's move it this way, there's not really that much in there. I feel pretty good about this not having much, so I'm going to scrape this out in here. If I felt like it was too gritty, I would scrape it through the strainer. And so what you're getting, this looks like about one and three quarters cups. A Ninja Creamy Pine is about two cups. So I could just if I wanted to make a Ninja Creamy pint with it, I would add some additional water to fill up the pint to the max fill line. For a creamer, I would just go ahead and put this in the fridge and it should last for probably, if it's almond, four to five days. If it's oat, it's probably better if you use it that day. Don't go more than two days. It's gonna separate a little bit more. Mm, that's really, really, really good. <laughs> like really good.
What you could use this in is you could use it in an iced coffee, you could use it in a hot coffee, you could use this as a cocoa mix in the winter because it's going to come out a little bit warm. You could even go higher and go to the hot and let it cook it longer to be like a thicker hot cocoa. That would be lovely. Okay, let's talk a little more about some of the settings. So room temperature we talked about, it's going to be like making raw almond milk in your Vitamix or blender, right? So there's no heating, there's just the blade moving around and that is also timed. Warm takes it up to 140 degrees, I always forget. And I knew that would be enough to melt the chocolate chips. It's also enough if you want to do, maybe not use medjool dates, but use the harder dates. That's, I feel like, I, I thought with all of this, um, fiber that it was going to be a lot a lot more would filter out but it did really well and i think some of that was the temperature as well hot is made particularly for soybeans because it has to be cooked a certain amount of time so also each one of these so the um, hot is 212 degrees but it's also going to cook longer because it takes longer to come up to that temperature and and come back down then water boil would be if you're going to make some tea, if you want to make about one and three quarters cup of hot water for your soy curls to pour over to reconstitute them. Keep warm. So let's say I did make this as a cocoa instead of a creamer. I could leave it on keep warm and I could drink a little bit now, maybe drink a little bit later. Um, and self-clean, we're going to look at, so we're going to put some water in here and self-clean it because this can't go into the dishwasher because all this is mechanical, right? So what I will do is go ahead and rinse these. I'm going to rinse the top because on the edges outside, it's not going to reach that <laughs> because it's on the outside. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my um, strainer. Put our creamer to the side. I'm going to put water to about the min line. So probably about a cup. I'm also going to go ahead and take a clean towel and clean this outside off because that also isn't really going to be affected by the cleaning going on inside. We're gonna put our lid on, seal it, and then plug it in. So again, and this is something that takes a little getting used to. Oh, because if you don't do anything, it will start. And we want it to go to self-clean. Okay, so it's starting. Okay, and again, the beeps tell us it's done. And Max is very happy. There's a lot of sounds my dog can't deal with. <laughs> it's not particularly loud compared to some other things. I'm still gonna wanna rinse this again. Okay, and we're gonna pour this out into here. Okay, so you can see a lot of it got clean, but there's still some chocolate. The chocolate is going to be kind of a sticking point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more clean water and I'm going to use this brush, right? So this brush lets me go around that sharp blade. 
without any danger of injuring myself, which is kind of awesome. Can also get any little spots maybe that were hanging on somewhere else. I could run it again or I could just decide. Looks good to me. So that's pretty much the nutter start to finish. Pros, fresh, cheap, non-dairy milk every day. Pretty much hands off and you can even put it together the night before. And I really love that. You can make a lot of different flavors. You can make things, creamers, non-dairy milk. You can go ahead and make kind of fancy coffees or teas by going ahead and putting brewed tea in there with your almonds and things like that. So that's another thing you could do. Um, it's not going to froth everything up the same way a frother will. This blade is more of a blender blade because it has a blender blade and not one of these little guys that whip up and make foam. So there's nothing wrong with that. So just be aware of what you need and what your expectations are. If you look at this and think you're making all of this, realize you're making one and one and a half to one and three quarters cup at a time. Can you run it over and over again? I believe you can. I've not really tried it. I've just made just enough. I haven't made, I've run it back to back once because I wanted to go ahead and make kind of the leftovers or what I would filter out be smaller. So that worked for me. I love the nut milk option. I really like that I can use oats, rolled oats in here is super cheap and I can do it room temperature and use cold water, which is gonna make it less slimy. I can still go ahead and put in my um, little eighth of a teaspoon or quarter of a teaspoon of ground chia seeds to help it stay together for a couple of days or even just to make it more palatable. So all of those things I like. Who it's not for. It's not for you if you have a really large family that goes through a quart of soy milk or almond milk in a day or two because you're just going to spend your whole time doing this. If you're one or two people, this is awesome. It is not super cheap. So it costs about the same amount as the larger full size soy milk multi-milk makers. So if you're looking at the Soy Joya or the Almond Cow or any of those. So that's something else to think about too. Um, it's super cute. You get some recipes in here and it gives you a homemade nut milk, but you really need to go to their site and or look at some YouTube videos. And I don't see that so much as a negative as it really gives you a way to learn more about the machine. And that's gonna be really good. I feel like it's really easy. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, I've actually had it over in my appliance corner for probably a month now. So it's just there and out and I can use it for water if I want to or make some quick nut milk if I need to. And it's been very convenient. Um, another thing I would say is if you can't get all of this out with the self-cleaning, just like if you're using some other appliances that you can't put in the water, <laughs> which I have a lot, if you have a sprayer, you can hold it where the plug is over here and you're spraying it over the sink like that and then make sure to wipe down all the sides. Um, that's not encouraged because if you get any water in here, it's not going to work anymore. So it does have a self-cleaning setting, but depending on what you're making, you may have to clean it a little bit extra. So is that a con? I'm not really sure. Um, I don't love that they talk about you don't really need to um, strain your milk. It is nutritious, but a lot of us are looking for non-dairy milks that are going to feel like store-bought and I hate nut milk bags and a lot of people do so it gives you the illusion that somehow this is going to be smaller and in this case it was but I had a friend who bought it who bought it simply because he was not going to have to strain his oat milk but he did so just don't let that messaging necessarily make you think it's perfect for you 
Um, other than that, I'm gonna keep it. It's earned a place on my counter, and I like the idea of just making a little bit of milk as I need it. Um, what I've done a couple times is I have made up enough for like a quart and just kept it in the fridge for a few days when I knew I was gonna use a lot because I was recipe developing. But in a normal two-person household, this is enough for a morning beverage or to add to soup or some pasta or something like that. So I think it's a really great way to make your own milks, either nuts, seeds, oats, grains, whatever you're going to use. You get to do any kind in here. What I don't like about some of the other makers is that either you can or cannot make soy milk with it. And I like that this has all the options plus boiling water. Um, which seems silly until if it earns a place on my counter, I want to be able to use it for something else. So that's my opinion on the Nutter and my recipe for this yummy <laughs> candy bar creamer. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have a Nutter and what you think about it, or if you think the Nutter's for you. Have an amazing day.